desperate for money, food, clothing, and ammunition. In early December 1776, Washington's army is falling apart. The British smell victory. The fact is their army is broken all to pieces and the spirit of their leaders is all broken. I think one may venture to pronounce it is well nigh over with them, Lord Rawdon. From a 20,000 strong army in August, only 3,500 troops are left. And with those enlistments expiring in January, Washington takes a bold gamble. If this fails, I think the game is pretty well up, General George Washington. He sets his sights on a daring attack at Trenton. But how to move his army across the Delaware without being detected? A crossing near McConkie's Ferry is the answer. Far enough from Trenton to escape notice, but close enough to reach the Hessians in a few hours' march. On Christmas night, 2,400 men, 18 cannon, and over 50 horses cross a treacherous, rain-swollen, ice-choked river. It rained, hailed, snowed, and froze, and at the same time blew a perfect hurricane. John Greenwood. Despite conditions, not one man, horse, or cannon is lost, but the operation falls hours behind schedule, and the cover of darkness is gone. But Washington and his tenacious troops have made their own luck. The Hessians, thinking no one would attack in such weather, cut short their normal scouting party. The Americans gain the advantage of surprise and drive the Hessians from Trenton. Fend off 8,000 British troops and go on to win a decisive battle at Princeton. In just 10 crucial days, from crossing the Delaware to victory at Princeton, the tide of the war has turned. The rebel soldiers begin to have more confidence, an unnamed British colonel. They are now become a formidable enemy, Colonel William Harcourt. Today, at Washington Crossing State Park, you can stand where the Americans landed, track the route to Trenton and on to Princeton. Here and throughout New Jersey lie the crossroads of the American Revolution. <laughs>